Well, good morning, everybody on the internet and elsewhere. Today is September 22nd, the first day after the start of spring in the Southern Hemisphere and fall in the Northern Hemisphere. Today I'm going to try to, I'm going to attempt to explain for the first time what um, Gaian humanism is or Gaia humanist uh, political philosophy, Gaia humanist social philosophy uh, is, or civil philosophy rather, is. Um, Gaian humanism is basically a, a um, school of thought, uh, a group of fundamental principles and values that um, as, as a whole uh, would uh, apply to everything that has to do with human civilization. Uh, our, polit our political history, our political thinking rather, not our history so much as, although it can be used to uh, revise history and have a, a different analysis or judgment on history, um, civil uh, law beliefs, cult social beliefs, social cultural beliefs, Everything. The difference with Gaia humanism and any other uh, political, social philosophy yeah, of civilization is that it doesn't really align with anything. What happens with Gaia humanism um, is that it, as you juxtapose it or superimpose it onto other belief systems, like you take, for example, any subject. Uh, let's say today's uh, sexual beliefs uh, of, of gender and sexuality in society and so forth. If you superimpose it, what you have is parts where it agrees with a what would be a traditional right-wing perhaps mentality, parts that agree with um, um, gay community, uh, principles and goals to a certain extent uh, it is to a certain extent it agrees with, with many things but ultimately it presents a definite uh, aim or a definite conclusion that is a product or a result of its own of its own uh, host of values and principles of its own um, scheme of, of, of reasoning and logic. Though that conclusion, that those conclusions may fall on something that is existing on either left or right or center today, but it really is irrelevant to uh, any uh, anything that today would uh, define a main stream of thought, left, right, center, uh, what have you traditional, classical, or uh, liberal, it, it has, you could find how it agrees with other things, but it really has its own trajectory and its own construction. Okay, that's, I'm going to pause right there, just so that you guys can get that. Okay. One thing that is interesting about Gaia humanist thinking is that as you juxtapose it to our beliefs in the world today, it presents uh, a discussion, argument, controversy, just like any other uh, political or social perspective or philosophy does, has always done in human history. What Gaia humanism in particular, in particular does is that when you juxtapose it, not only does it uh, speak about its own analysis, judgment, and trajectory on whatever you may be talking about, 
but it contrasts the uh, differences or the errors according to its own logic and explanation of what we believe today or what was believed at another time often it may seem to agree with uh, a course of reasoning on something that is believed today at least by a group of people or by a segment of the population only to at some point depart on its own tangent and conclude in like I said its own um, arrival uh, point or conclusion for that thing for that thing which for that which we are discussing or talking about okay pause a second okay before I go into the actual explanation uh, or trying to trying to it's not the easiest thing in the world to explain uh, to define guy of humanism although it's it's the most it's the simplest of all things that you could understand about how the world works and yet um, to explain it it's not so easy I'm going to start by showing the symbology the symbology of uh, Gaia humanism so far um, I've been referring to or using in my posts and internet uh, social networks and so forth the upside down peace sign which means uh, the upside down peace sign is called also the positive uh, peace sign or peace positive or peace up in other sites that I found also I call it the proactive or positive um, uh, peace sign uh, and it symbolizes basically a an intelligent uh, reasoning towards peace which necessarily must understand the errors uh, the tendencies that lead us to mistake in human nature in mistakes to mistakes the tendency in human nature that may lead us to mistakes and propose the and ultimately much better or better centered or more balanced proposal to sub substantiate sub uh, to substitute what is currently believed Whereas peace, the peace sign as we know it, and peace activism in general, um, has always had to do with simply laying down your hands, putting down your weapons, which is a good thing, but it's only part of the whole equation to um, give humanity a, a different form of becoming. Uh, so it, the problem with a peaceful peace is that it diffuses the confrontation but it allows for uh, those who who do not care about what your movement may want or our movement may want and decide to take advantage of the situation because now there's a there's a surrender available to you know uh, steamroll over and get freely done whatever their agenda is all about and so that's why peace has always failed in, in, in the concept of the 60s peace uh, we simply let things happen. We think it's elevated. We think it's very wise to just surrender, surrender, surrender. And it comes, it's old. It comes from uh, the 60s American peace movement has evolved from also Asian, Indian, uh, 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 you know, different uh, uh, schools of religious thought that, that say accept suffering, accept life, surrender, just don't question, don't argue. Don't confront. Don't try to. Yeah, and then we have, we have, evolved it and created um, uh, expansive variations on that, where we really hammer it in in great detail. In any case, they're all in the same uh, realm of a surrendering peace, uh, which, like I said, allows for those who do not, who not care less for uh, the goodwill and the good spirit of peacefulness uh, to just go ahead and now have open reign to whatever they want to do okay so that's the upside down or up positive peace constructive peace proactive peace sign which is I have recruited it to be a symbol of Gaia humanism uh, and it's it's not an in invented sign 
I, I thought for a while it was invented, and then I realized that it was used in Native American tribes, and actually a site I found on the internet, uh, now I forget, I think it's called Positive Peace, has the story behind its creator, uh, the creator of the peace sign, who actually realized that it was more energizing to have it up, proactive, more um, in, uh, incentivating or motivating of doing something about bringing peace. Um, and he went to the grave, sadly, uh, not having been able to establish what his preference was, which was the peace up sign. Very interesting story. I can't believe I forgot the name. I apologize for that. Okay, the other um, symbol is that I use is the rainbow flag. <laughs> I'm going to try to not be, uh, not get too crazy about that. The rainbow flag was not originally meant to symbolize and it did not get uh, created nor it's an old old symbology the collection of the colors of the rainbow for a specific symbology is not created in the 80s uh, it was adopted by the gay community and it basically um, symbolizes very very obviously the full spectrum of the rainbow and so this symbology was uh, traditionally it was never used a whole lot although you find it in, in around the world in different places and I haven't researched it enough but I read enough to under to understand my path of thinking and um, and to explain that the rainbow flag was actually used to express the universality or the uh, multi uh, group or multi social or cultural uh, allowance, acceptance, or inclusion, or availability, or, um, or disposition towards all groups of a given administration or system or, of order, organization. So in other words, if you had, for example, a, uh, a social service uh, office, and you wanted it in some part of Brooklyn, and you wanted people to know that it was for people from all around the world, to come and access um, immigration service, not just for Puerto Ricans, but for anybody from around the world to come access social assistance, you would put a rainbow flag, and I'm not saying this was done, I'm explaining how it would be used, so that it, the person that is looking for immigration services knows that it's for anybody from around the world. Now, the, um, the gay community started as in human, as we do in, in human civilization, so often uh, continue on from a point where we had the right idea or the right intention, and then so often we veer and build something wrong or build it the wrong way or not use it for what it was meant to, and so forth. The gay community started by using, saying, "We are included too." Now, without getting into the the scientific or the homosexual conversation about that um, we are included too would establish the premise that we exists as a human group okay so the political conclusion was recruited to the in the purpose uh, which is theoretical which is debatable which uh, homosexuality does not uh, can easily be argued does not exist as a separate group uh, this was actually damage done onto society that we not we know in the name of inclusion we have created a separation but like I said I don't want to go into that and has um, used this symbology to um, uh, you know support their own cause ultimately because they started by saying uh, that it's it's so that we're included so that we're equal with everybody else but everybody else didn't get talked about anymore and now it's just to talk about them and when, when they are present so they robbed the symbology of the rainbow flag and so I'm not trying to create a confrontation or a war about the who be, who that flag or that symbology belongs to I just feel that it's incredibly much truer a lot truer to the principles and values of Gaia humanism that it is to uh, 
making a secting, I want to say like creating a sect, uh, uh, separating a group of people for its use. And it's quite ironic that a, a symbology that was uh, that exists in order to represent all people has been uh, confined to the uh, sole purpose, agenda, cause, whatever you want to call it, of a specific uh, group, sub group of society, what have you, having to do with a you know contemporary cultural movement. It's, it's so um, specific. Uh, and its specificity seems to uh, ironically fly in the face of the actual purpose, the actual purpose of the rainbow symbology. Okay, so those two explanations done. Let me pause again. Okay, before I get into the actual explanation or attempt to explain Gaia humanism or Gaian humanism, um, I think I need to establish a few notions that are not invented, they're not something I have come up with. They're just things that are important to really um, cement down or, or get well laid into the foundation upon which Gaia humanism or Gaian humanism will be, uh, can be understood for its value for its significance and for its purpose. One thing that we, uh, one concept or notion, and I, I want to apologize that I'm not so well studied. I may take a, 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 I'm not so well read or studied. I have listened and paid attention and understood things all my life. And I can, um, you know, explain a lot of things that then I confirm by finding in a book. Um, and I think a lot of us uh, should be less underestimated in this uh, new era of communication that um, has created so many of us that are able to understand through hearing and believing, knowing how to find people that know what they're talking about and so forth. Or, you know, whether it's video or spoken, but in any case. So I apologize for taking... Uh, perhaps a long route to say something that may be easily found and explained in a book somewhere. The notion, uh, this has to do with the notion of uh, our relationship with our high intelligence. The intelligence um, that differentiates us from animals, and it is vast, there has been a lot of muddling and, and muffing, mushing of this <laughs> um, but um, looking at it scientifically purely uh, platonically and, and, and without and devoid of idealisms um, as much as I love animals and want them to live freely and enjoy how they are meant to live life to their full experiential capacity, I am uh, not putting them down. <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows that I would uh, leap into the ocean to save a dolphin from from being sandbarred or what have you. Um, this said, um, we need to understand how important it is to understand ourselves in a theological context and in a realism context of our existence in the world, how uniquely uh, far away <laughs> we are from animals in this capacity that we have. And speaking of this capacity that differentiates us, I'm not saying that we are necessarily better, because to say better, you have to create a third outside context meaning an intelligence outside uh, the solar system that is looking, that does not care, that is so much in, in another, a different category that can look at human beings and animals and say, this one is better or not better. So we have always said better in reference, in, in the, from the perspective and context of judging ourselves as, the, as that parameter, as the, as the reference uh, to saying better. So I'm not going to say 
uh, we're better. We are, however, seeing that dolphins and uh, seem to have, I don't know if it's the same with other cetaceans, uh, a much more complex brain with greater separation between the lobes and just as, you know, so there are many directions in which evolution can go. It's not one way or the other. But as far as what we're capable of generating for our own survival, housing, which would, evolutionarily speaking, at a, in a cosmic uh, context, is the, the description of intelligence, of the intelligence of a species. Because if it can protect itself through sciences, through its intelligence of disease, and help its ultimate purpose of reproduction and evolving and continuing on, I would say that its intelligence is serving its own uh, primary purpose. So um, we have an identifiable um, amount or distance, if you want to compare ourselves to animals, uh, that we can define in we can define through this capacity, this, this gift, uh, or, uh, yeah, a gift that humanity has. It is a gift because with it we can, we are certainly more than in theory not vulnerable to a lot of the things, and we shouldn't be suffering, but that's a whole other thing. Um, a lot of things that we allow ourselves to suffer anyways. So... In the, in the, what I want to establish is that in the, in the foundation that our intelligence is capable of producing our world, our environmental, uh, a, a physical environment generated, a physical environment which has to do with our own survival and the means through which we want to live or are going to live or propose ourselves we will live better if we do this, this, or that. We can identify the production of our intelligence. The production of our intelligence is everything that we invent for ourselves by desire, but mainly for our own subsistence, too, so that we never run out of food, so that we never get cold. The fact that we have this intelligence um, itself is uh, perhaps the, the, a starting point to understand where the, uh, the theological intercession of rationalizing, understanding what God may be, is found. And in particular because of uh, how we don't seem to be very good at using this intelligence that separates us and makes us so different. And makes a humanity so outstanding. Uh, we don't know how to use it, and that's where I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm arriving at explaining what Gaia humanism is. Uh, obviously, because we uh, hurt ourselves. The primary purpose of intelligence is to uh, create a healthier environment for its own creator. So if its own creator creates an environment that yes on one hand it does amazing things for its own comfort and its subsistence and its progress its thriving ability it also with the other hand uh by the other hand does uh things that cause cause suffering torment uh, pain um, discomfort separation from their own kind, alienation of people between each other, all things that go against what the natural, um, pure design of the species would have had. So if you can, if you were able to artificially, conceptually, of course, separate uh, this capacity that mankind has with its intelligence to create its env own environment uh, and leave um, 
the species pure as it would be closest to any other animal on the planet that we can think of, uh, we would see that we'd probably just resort to finding sh ready-made shelter, things that we can just get under for uh, to protect ourselves from the rain, uh, probably find things to throw in. Uh, well, in any case, um, <laughs> you get the point. Um, another interesting uh, aspect of what having this large size uh, capacity causes this being, this pure being. Um, it causes, for example, for us to say, well, we're going to insist on living in the ice. Animals don't do that. Animals, uh, if they're, it's uncomfortable, they're not going to fight against nature. They're going to go where things are already there for them to not make all that much effort. Um, mankind does more than just have a capacity, but it wants things that seem to extrude and veer off um, what practicality because it is seeking to do something and that seeking that something I don't believe exists it's like a, it's almost like saying putting a larger engine in a small car and the things that that little small car will do with this Ferrari engine are not necessarily zip like a like a bullet from one part of the world to the other, it will do odd things. It will consume tires like crazy, and they will have to, you will have to change tires, every, or it will um, get excessively exhausted when going uphill, and will not use another part of the engine if you let it roll downhill. There will be all sorts of oddities that will that will come about um, th this the <laughs> you know with time on this little this little car this little Fiat 600 when put into it this amazing engine. I see metaphorically humanity as such. I feel that it was our creators or God's intention to give us a capacity or to let us ex have us exist with a capacity that we will one day behold apparently we don't think much of it um, and say wow if it weren't for this that God has given us we would be freezing and starving and, and having all sorts of diseases and um, instead we allow this intelligence to create armies against one another and so God is probably saying oh boy well yeah that was expected you know that they don't know what to do with it you know they're just kind of expressing this abundance and they, they they're, they're prey to their own to what the animal side of them or the basic being side of them uh, extrudes with this intelligence and hopefully they'll get it that it's given to them that they have to do something with it. They have to seize it and, and see how they can't handle it and realize that they can't handle it so they can stop making errors and using it against themselves and see what the... I think that that is truly... Uh, the day that we're able to do that will be truly uh, infinitely thankful to our creators or to God, not like we do today where we just do, you know sing and dance and try our best and... Um, that day we will probably tear with the gratefulness of what it means that had it not been for uh, and then of course that plays in uh, f will has a the free will that uh, God has endowed us with enters perfectly in understanding why he does not interfere or they do not interfere and let us um, discover by our own how to, uh, some dads say uh, let him find out by by bruising and rolling on the ground with his buddies, you know, let him f figure out the hard way. That is what free will is about. And I think, and this is what I was saying, Gaia humanism sometimes goes into and starts speaking a little bit like Christianity and maybe speaking like a lot of other religions that I'm, I'm familiar with. But ultimately, it always stands apart because it says, well, don't try to put God, you know, uh, on your side or, or or designate yourself to be on the side of God and have 
endow yourself with the authority and the righteousness to say I'm better than others, which is basically what all religions end up doing. They they um, they put God as the goal or their uh, the purpose of their behavior, and God keeps saying, "I gave you free will. I told don't forget about me. Don't think about me. Just know that I." I, I created you and I gave you this for you to be happy with it and use it to save yourself from all the problems that would be caused by your animalistic side and, and, and see what a thrill and what fun you will have in doing that. Um, actually, there is scripture that kind of uh, hints at that, but we never have interpreted it as such so far. Okay, that's the spiritual side of Gaia humanism. And when I uh, created the idea of Gaia humanism, I saw that it needed to have, it seems that the world, human intelligence works with two spheres. The, what it's more avid and ambitious and, uh, what do you call it, mm, arrogant, I'm lacking wor good words right now, uh, does. Is instant gratification, it's more self, whatever. It's less altruistic side creates, engineers. And then there's this house of morality and spirituality and, and values that are more of a collective thinker that says, in order f those people make it, so you, what you have is a result as, uh, that is now being muddled but we have always had, metaphorically, or analogous, the analogous example would be that, for example, the priests get mad at the police for not having more compassion and beating up the citizens and throwing them in jail. And the priest or the church um, say, have some compassion, see if, if he maybe was not guilty, you know. And, and psychology kind of does that too, also a collective intellectual uh, area of thought says, no, you gotta understand the species, you gotta understand what affects us and why we come out a certain way. And so what I've seen is that the world has like t these two main areas, the one that produces and doesn't, cannot stop to think about the wisdom of the whole for a second and, and only furthers the interest of a, a group of, a small group of individuals, let's say. So because I kind of, so far, I, I, I it seems that we, we have that way of, uh, of walking forward as a civilization. These seem to be our two legs. And in the middle is so far our error instead of us. <laughs> so far what we have in the middle is the production, our past and our future, and the result of these two, this walk. And so far it's what we have, okay? Um, so I figured, likewise, we should have um, a Gaia humanist s spiritual altruistic uh, house, just like we've always had, um, and which could be the, the religious house of, of Gaia, which is very close to what green, vegan, um, uh, ecological sciences, you know, are already, so it seems that Gaia humanism is also being brought about by our own path, trying to uh, be, uh, ends up as a, as where we're going or as a result or is being created by our own path. And then on the other side, that should be on our left, on the right is what we do more practically with experience. Uh, on the other side would be the, the nuts and bolts of a Gaia humanist political thinking, law, um, business, commerce, industry, how we, everything that we do with our intelligence, do it in a way that is by the wisdom of the left side or the, the Gaia humanist church, uh, done as true, as best as possible uh, to this spiritual house, to its own spiritual house, but by the means that we have in the world, which may have other priorities that I can't, I'm not thinking right now, which is maybe just to get things done so that people tomorrow will have their house and tomorrow will have their food and will have 
their medical care and there will be social protection and, and uh, safety and uh, non-physical violence committed against each other because people go crazy and all the other problems we have in this this un, um, what is ultimately our human condition the, our human condition um, it is my view is a result of God's gift of this vast intelligence that I was referring to to make our own betterment the day we realize it and truly seize it and are truly grateful for the first time um, however creating a permanent a permanent um, unbalance because it is something that was given extra so it's almost like saying look uh, stretch out your arms boom here's all this stuff go build yourself a house and we get shoved off go populate the world and as we're walking we're dropping stuff we're hurting people that it falls on a baby's head and we, I'm just gonna put it down I'm not gonna take it to wherever we're supposed to lay it down you know and that's it that's that's the human predicament we're in a constant state of unbalance meaning unbalance meaning that we err that we get it wrong that we have shortcomings that we don't uh, see the full picture uh, we can't ha it seems that we can't handle this intelligence so far we seem to be proving we can't handle it um, and so which brings me to start explaining Gaia humanism uh, on that note that we can't handle it Gaia humanism basically um, is the set of values and principles and reasoning and everything that um, starts reordering um, logic and reasoning according to our most ultimate greatest goals and primary uh, prime uh, purposes and um, the place to start the place it must necessarily start and this may seem like so what to some people but actually if you think about to for who and why we do all of the things we do in nation law country civilization social rules and what have you they don't start from there in fact we start from division in mo nearly everything we do uh, we get to places of unity when we are they're so obvious like there's a water source here and our neighbor has no water at all and the water source comes out right in our house and we go oh, duh, well maybe it's supposed to be for both you know but in reality civilization uh, does not start on on a unifying um, reason tra trajectory of reasoning and so but Gaia humanism or Gaian humanism does start um, obviously the spiritual the, is already there uh, the political sort of engineering human logic creating of of our environment uh, physical part of Gaian humanism starts on the premise of the whole so it's almost like if you can imagine um, and I always give this analogy because it makes it easy uh, this metaphor I mean if you can imagine where a species traveling through space and I've seen this in Facebook a lot of people get to the same, have the same idea um, traveling through space looking for a, a, we can't live in a spaceship forever we gotta find a planet to land on and perhaps we're leaving a world that was destroyed or something um, and we find a place that miraculously because it's very not as not as uh, probable as we think today uh, find a planet that has the perfect balance of chemistry, gravity, and everything for our bodies, for what our bodies are. Um, and we decide to go there. Now, 
before opening the the spaceship door we're a group of people that have arrived there together and our first concerns of course will be for all of us together in that spaceship and our first concerns will be naturally to not catch anything because we have been purified for the trip and we have eliminated all infections and bacteria and everything that could discomfort and have us therefore being able to live as comfortable as possibly in the spaceship so when we get to this planet the first thing and, and also knowing that we have uh, already uh, are endowed with the capacity to uh, not contract bacterial infections for example uh, by having a, an immunity vaccine or what have you and so our first concern when we open the the door to the, the spaceship is what are the conditions of this planet can we catch anything will there be anything there that could threaten uh, is the water clean? And so, in, in a hierarchical uh, order of logic, what makes most sense, what this metaphor is trying to say, is that what makes most sense to the collective, as to, to a human being, to an individual even, when you start thinking in terms of all of us, all of us, all of us, which always means one of us, when we say all of us. Saying all of us can never not mean one of us. Okay. Um, people want to argue that, and it's. And I will anticipate that if you want to argue that, it's because you are precluding the premise of uh, having differentiations having had occurred, uh, generating different needs in any case. So philosophically, it means the same thing, it, which the metaphor therefore tell, uh, is saying that health and our well-being, uh, physical well-being, optim optimal health, is what will concern us the most for our existence, our existence being represented as descending from this spaceship onto this new planet. And this applies, this is not spiritual, as so far we have only been allowed by the status quo of, of human civilization, let's just say, has been so far relegated to like holistic living, vegan, organic living, you know, it's, we've seen this as something very spiritual, and we, we make little pushes to try to m bring it onto the physical world and make it law, or make it the practice of how food is actually produced. But so far it hasn't. What we're saying is in Gaia humanist um, um, political philosophy is to start the construction of administration according to this hierarchy or this order. In other words, that our health is optimal, that the health of all human beings, and therefore in this case it would be a nation because nation is the first collective closest to what would be the natural cell of humankind uh, that we create by uh, language and society, familiarity, history, and everything is nation, nationhood, a people's nation. And therefore, already we see that a, a government or a political uh, party that would be Gaia Humanist would have its order of administration already built differently. Um, if you want to compare it to capitalism, it seems forget how we started because how we started is not about making profit and having industries grow although it didn't, didn't take long for it to start becoming that but today you, you one might describe capitalism as being based on the growth of the economy and the uh, you know basically um, the financial virility of institution and corporation and industry and it seems that everything else is running after that and, and trying to cater to that well uh, I'm making light of it I'm not a pro uh, of capitalism I hear people talk seem to know a lot more I can also hear when people that know a lot more than me by focusing on the cons on the concept of what they're saying or the essential the fundamental premise or the essence of what they're saying. I can also hear when people veer off in their own 
abundance of knowledge, but that's uh, neither here nor there. I'm just substantiating where my intellect works, where, where it's, where it, uh, yeah, where basically it works. Okay, so Gaia humanism uh, would be built on, uh, as, as a political party, on a different kind of pyramid, and the first matter of importance is that the entire people concerned by its administration, whether it be world, nation, or state, perhaps, I don't know, I think nation is probably the starting point, uh, is first that everybody absolutely has the access to the best instant diagnosis, cure, you know, health is what matters the most to these people getting out of the spaceship. After that, of course, comes their sustenance. Their, primarily their intake, their food, what they're going to continue to build their bodies with and how they're going to continue maintaining their, the biological functioning of their bodies, and that has to do with food. Uh, again, we have that already in spiritual houses of thought in the world, but it's really having a hard time making it to the food industry as we know. Well, in a political party of Gaia humanism, it would be uh, right there next to health. And, and this is the beauty of uh, Gaia humanist, Gaia humanist political um, party or philo philo philosophy school of thought is that its uh, order, it's all interconnected. It all works beautifully together as, you know, one is healthy, the other one next to it is probably healthy too. Or if you want to make the one higher up a little bit stronger, it probably means that the one below needs to be bigger or stronger. In, a, in the most comprehensive ways, uh, w which would contrast the way today uh, political structures of thinking towards government work. Uh, you talk about something being strong over there that will affect the health of something all the way over there. They don't, it's just sort of an apparatus that was. Um, so this is the basic construction principle of Gaia humanism. I mean, I still haven't gotten yet to what it actually is, but I think you start, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to render the idea by approaching it slowly like this. Okay, so I'm going to pause again now. Okay, um, let's see, Gaia humanism is, the f ultimately it is the fusion of uh, all that concerns our optimal Gaia biological, ecological functioning creation of nature, um, which is ample sciences and knowledge about, with uh, a humanism, which is not the, uh, perhaps the humanism a lot of people are thinking of. I know there, there is an Argentinian that uh, has furthered humanism a great deal. Uh, I know a little bit about him. I, I met some of the people that follow him still to the, he's, I believe he died, but that still follow his school of thought. And what I came to understand is that that humanism or that the humanism that is um, followed in the world today perhaps has a, a leniency towards uh, spiritual values, almost like a religion um, of altruism and doing for your fellow man and so forth, and, and that seems to be a definition of being a humanist. Um, but I took the word and seeing that it, the grammar of the word adapts to also a different definition, I am calling humanism the science of understanding how we are biologically and purely as a species, as a collective species. So how we have evolved to, uh, to proliferate and thrive, devoid of what I've sort of described as an added intelligence, divinely added intelligence. Outside of that, um, what we see optimally generates our functioning. And how I establish uh, to clean it of all idealisms or scientific theories. How I establish that is by, um, and I call this an evolutionary theory uh, or part of evolutionism. I don't know if it is. Again, uh, 
how it is popularly known, but to me it seems to make sense that saying that, for example, if mankind has for 99% of its evolutionary history that we can go by back as far as we can to where we say, okay, that's human being, it's not a simian, but that's a human being already, and I think it's not too far behind when we start writing and making implements, but basically writing has for all this time 99% or 99.5% of its history and that is not an exaggeration it might be even more has always uh, eaten apples with the peel on and the last 0.5% when we started making buildings out of wood in combination with uh, some of the new the first printing presses and when we became really really smart and started applying ideals to to society and so forth at one point they said um, no remove the peel the conclusion must of reference in Gaia humanism goes by the fact that it seems we should find that optimally it is best for uh, for the human body to eat the peel on the apple not because we're used to it but because we uh, we should be used to it after 99.5 percent of our time eating the peel but because we evolved during that 99.5 percent of our time change and adapted and changed and evolved our stomach to digesting it which did something chemically with the peel that resulted in our skin which resulted in, in our eyeballs and resulted in this and this and that and therefore we can safely establish that it is optimally best for the body that we eat the peel now what we have is a reality of the world where people eat too much peel or the peel is coming out with toxins and we don't care or it's growing in a place where it develops not like the way what we always will find is that if we go back to where that apple peel was eaten for the 99.5 percent of the time it did not have that kind of pesticide it did not have that it did not grow in that part of the world or what have you and therefore that is that indicates the actual reason for why today the peel is hurtful or maybe we eat too much of it or what have you so this is this gives you uh, basically uh, a premise on which uh, humanist guy and humanist truth is built not is, excuse me Gaia humanist builds its conclusions on nothing more than that um, I find that nothing could be truer in everything. If you want to talk about um, sexuality, uh, you know, being adopted by gay parents, um, one of the main things that um, Gaia humanism, in, in in coming often from places where it doesn't have all, doesn't know everything there is to know learns and grows and when one finds a guy a humanist quote unquote finds that there was something that we were never bringing into the equation and which actually amalgamates the whole a lot better while not veering up veering us off our path is for example the area of resiliency this is something I discovered and I'm making an example of it uh, and so I welcome into Gaia humanism the aspect of adaptation and resiliency a great deal not to justify an exception which is what a lot of people make the mistake of doing but to say wait that ex it, it makes more room for the situation and it explains things uh, in a greater scope making more space for all the variants Gaia humanism is an intellectual, or rather a, a, a brainy, I don't know if intellectual, but something where you've got to think a lot of different things and have them all included. So it is a very intelligent um, social, political, civil philosophy because it must include things. Now, 
what I'm thinking is that once enough people are very versed in the whole in maintaining the concept whole and allowing for inclusions of things that we didn't know before and which makes it even more articulate to explain the path that we never lose from sight um, something will um, manners what will emerge are ways of explaining that end up being the core or the guiding lines for paths that will mean we would no longer will have to spend two hours explaining something so that can finally be understood this other point over here but we'll be able to direct and walk paths that are now well uh, worn in and uh, which are worn in by grabbing all the things that were necessary to be grabbed along the way and including it into a simpler uh, dissertation so going back to um, so Gaia humanism, the evolution of Gaia humanism would say that, for example, when it comes to uh, raising uh, children through a gay couple, I'm already in, I'm anticipating, I, I want, I'm tempted to jump to something we already have in the sciences of psychology created in the last 40 years, but I want to, what I want to show is how the path of Gaia humanism is something that walks its own areas often through spaces that are there's nothing in and then all of a sudden it starts crossing through something we all uh, are familiar with and then it confirms things but from its own perspective not so that people can jump oh see so let's go with that we were wrong about saying they, they were wrong let's go back to that belief because that's where the path needs to continue from no Gaia humanism walks through these spaces and then leaves these spaces that's just how it is okay um, so for the 99.5% of, of humanity, uh, our children were raised, babies were raised in the, the, the clan family, the family of people, parent, mom and dad, starting with mom and dad and the kids around them perhaps in ways that have constituted a majority. There have been many variations uh, social, as soon as we became a socially articulate communicative uh, species, we uh, certainly started for sure uh, you trying different things. And versatility, resiliency is what plays into this. And, and, and perhaps it's where it has also some of its origins, some of its, some of its origin. But basically, what we know, what we can confirm with human sciences that I don't really have to go into a huge dissertation about, is that we have found that uh, we, when I say we, I mean human sciences in many countries in the last 40 years have elaborated. I, don't, I could easily banally call it f basic fundamental Freudian psychology, but I don't know if that's even a correct name to put on it. That... Um, the child, the baby, it makes sense if you look, think of it, Gaia and humanistically, uh, y you can easily make sense of it by just thinking of the real experience of the actual baby. Imagine that it's right there next to you. Uh, and then you, you walk that path and you see that it actually confirms things that were much more elaborately explained in some of the sciences that we have actually abandoned and replaced them with other social idealisms lately. Everybody's going crazy now because we're starting to see it and they're all attacking and arguing uh, that we made a mistake, nobody listens to them, people are sounding the alarm, and it's, it's a mess where we are at. So anyways, to keep our sanity, the simpler, the better. Um, the baby will perhaps not know right away what it is, but what it immediately understands and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see this, is that his kind is present uh, in a context, in a backdrop of something else. That is the world, and th these are the ones I relate to, you know, these that walk with arms and heads. That's me, says the baby, right? So the recognition of a species, of its own species, of other beings, immediately, of course, it will swell. Those are all big. And I noticed there are other ones that are tiny like me. They're all also kind of like down there, 
not doing anything while well, these big ones are doing everything and walking and calling the shots, <laughs> says the baby. And so it, it recognizes adults and it recognizes itself as something that is still not there yet that will be that a tall adult. In all of these pro this is all developmental sciences. I mean, I, I'm, ma I'm, I'm, I'm making, I'm telling it very uh, sort of layman's uh, explanation, perhaps a more uh, a, f a more fun way of uh, seeing how simple it actually is. Um, and so, what happens is that the baby um, sees at some point recognizes that one of these two, because it sees it, are clearly two. And so again, thinking of what the trajectory of most of its, keep in mind that the baby's brain is doing a lot of transformation and changing growth. And during that growth, if anybody's an artisan who understands uh, the process of layering and, uh, and drying and waiting for something to dry and then doing something else to it, you know how how decisive it is to imprint or mark something during its changing or transforming period. There are things that you do at one stage that you, you can't undo later or will create uh, a spot or a mark or an inclination or a tendency later down the line, okay? So we're not so different in this sense. Um, right away, the baby identifies the two genders and identifies itself as one of these two genders and says, well, that's me, <laughs> you know? And it looks like that one's my little sister or me and my little brother are that one right there. You know, without reasoning it, it's doing it without words, without language. Do you understand where I'm, where I'm heading with this? So, in developing the baby's the baby's brain as it's developing this is also a part of uh, whatever neuropsychological sciences or what have you um, it's also developing a sense of the world and a sense of me what I am and my relationship and how they the world is towards me and this, this whole uh, articulation is developing in the baby's brain and naturally, there's nothing available to the baby that is truer to uh, in confirming what it needs to be about when, it re when we're talking about how it regards itself and how it needs to be, because it, it thinks how it needs to be because all it has as far as behavior or what it is, is seeing others like it. That's all we have. We have each other. We don't learn from looking at animals. We learn and we believe, we develop what will be believed and what we understand and all our instruments come from each other. Um, that's why it's so dangerous to apply an idealism that we created, that we created out here and then say, okay, now let's take that idealism and apply it to us. Was it, de was it developed? Uh, by confirming and bouncing off one another, some of it, but a lot of it is not. In any case, I don't want to change subjects. And so the self will develop according to what it learns, starting with the image of its parent that is its same gender. And the girl does the same with the mom, and, and then the, the little girl will learn about men by looking, starting by looking at men, and then it will continue by looking at other men and then it will learn about relationships between men by seeing how those other men relate to her dad and as she grows older it will all get bigger and more complex so this has constituted 99.5 percent of what our brain is in other words our optimal health not because of an idealized rationalism but because it is simply a fact, a, a fact that is no longer around us, but it is more than a scientific conclusion or, or theory. It is uh, the unequivocal, unmistakable um, reasoning 
of why what has been true for the last 99.5% of our evolution is best and optimal to us today because that is the environment that has produced what we are which I explained a little while ago and therefore it stands to reason that having a mom and having a, a male father will optimally fulfill what our brain is expecting to learn by, to learn through. Now, this does not create a camp in a war right away, like everybody wants to take sides and, 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 and think that the other person is saying the opposite. It is not. Mankind is resilient, um, adaptable. Men have, babies have lost their moms or their fathers as soon as they came out of out of uh, out of the tummy, out of out of uh, the mom's uterus, practically. And so this means, and this is just a small example. The fact that a mom or a dad could die initially is just a small example to say the world is full of variants, and therefore this also explains how women have evolved to do everything what men can, and a man can do what a woman does, and. It, opens up to um, another argument, another, you know, feminism and equal rights and all that, which I don't want to get into right now, because I only wanted to talk about one example, which is the, the, the optimal, in other words, it's not about winning an argument, it's about doing what's right in government, because that's what Gaia humanist political philosophy is. They're saying we need to have, we want to have a comprehensive structure of understanding, of logical understanding, which makes it easy to say, okay, then we're going to support through our laws that there's always a dad available for the baby when a father is lost, that uh, we help the couple stay together, that, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because it's all based on the original 99.5% of the matrix that has given form and we as a political institution attempt our best not to substitute not to not to interfere but to support however the body has done it all this time or however the body has resolved it all this time so for example upon the uh, loss of a, a, uh, a, a father there is a space in the evolutionary logic or in the brain or however, you, however we can better start talking about it where there's another male that realizes the woman was left alone with the babies and somebody has to defend the family and da 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 da, da. So often it is the brother it doesn't have to be the brother okay we have to stop trying to say okay now, it's, now he says that we must do that no 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 Temperance. Temperance is an absolute necessity in America right now. We're giving an example of how uh, the brain may have evolved so that we can establish more comprehensive political guidance on what would be a uh, Gaia humanist political school of thought. And therefore, if the father dies, or if the mom is left elderly without any family to help her, alone and abandoned in, a, in an old age home, Gaia humanist political thinking would have created a, it already exists in many parts of the world, a system by which we go look for a, a relative that has always wanted to help and the mother didn't let her or let him and now perhaps she will accept him. They can be in the family, take care of finding the right doctor. Uh, spoil the elder person with the things so that they're happy in their old age and not, you know, wheeled in front of a TV thinking that that is comfort for the poor elderly person. Really, they want to see dogs playing in the yard or they want to go play, uh, what do you call that game, the Basques play, where they throw a ball on the sand and the other one has to <laughs> throw another ball and has to fall ne near the, the first ball and it's like a long bowling alley kind of sport anyways uh, only a son or a brother would know that that has always been the passion of his elderly brother and so 
Gaia humanism would reinforce the idea that evolution has always so solved and um, remedied uh, alterations, or I don't say alterations, uh, I, I'm, I'm, okay, I can't think of the word right now, um, things when they go wrong or they break and it heals or it substitutes, it tries. Gaia humanism can go into scientific research. It would study in rather how the skin, um, the optimal environment for healing a wound, and it goes everywhere in every science. Okay, so this is why I'm saying that Gaia humanism would agree with a lot of things, but at the same time, it would, when juxtaposed to today's world as we are living it, it you would have enormous areas of it which are completely different and, and, and it would be criticized if by ignorant people or who don't have a sense of the biological or the natural or the ecology or self-sustainability or green or what have you uh, and they would say oh you're just you know you're just living in lollipop land and you think that you know this is always going to happen and, and you know there's always going to be war and people really are mean and they want you know all these ideas things that we believe which you have to take with salt because if when you think Gaia humanistically you know that <laughs> it is the interest of the species to survive the first thing that comes to the human mind is not to kill, kill another one of your own kind um, that comes perhaps later <laughs> Um, but that is not the source. A lot of people have, have, for example, ordered their logic in things like that say you will always have war and you will always need armies, uh, and therefore the a priority for a country is having first and foremost before all its citizens have shelter and food is having a strong army, and it all is a result of having ordered the premise or the given of ideas a certain way. And so what people who think along the, uh, the rationale of Gaia humanism would constantly be running into fights and arguments, of course. But, you know, and that's the nature of anything that discovers the great error of something that a majority has been doing. You will have masses that want to lynch you and want to, uh, <laughs> you know, say you're crazy or discredit you. It happens even in the realms of, of oppositions that are both wrong. It has to do more with maintaining power, and if a greater number of people have influence, they will undermine the other one who had a better idea, but it was also wrong, but nobody knew both were wrong because it's all about having power and maintaining your self-survivability and furthering yourself uh, above others, which uh, obviously does not stem from the premise that we have to start rationalizing always from the collective first, which is what Gaia and humanism does. It always does, does that, uh, it always asks, does your thinking start and lead from the premise of all as one? No, that would mean that a lot of people, no, it, it starts over here somewhere in a, a point way past a separation that occurred long before and it starts rationalizing in a cone that opens up from that direction. Well, all Gaia humanist logic and reasoning starts on a, in a cone whose vertice is anchored in all of us, all humanity, all people. So right away you're going to run into, um, you know, ideas that are maybe even uh, meaning well, like for example, well, then we shouldn't have countries, we shouldn't have borders. No, 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 stop. Stop right there. Because all of us, all of us, speak different languages. All of us have a different, the realistic picture of us, uh, of the world today, is that we are all constituted, as we're speaking at this very moment, of different histories with their languages, and there are other forces that bring us together, and they come into uh, best, most effectively, and practically organized as nations. So Gaia humanism would start through the exist by on the on the existence of nations. So that already kind of go flies in the face of of people who are dreamers, 
uh, you got to be careful with idealisms because sometimes they think they're the closest to love and God, but really they're not centered on you, you, your species, and others, and our ultimate, truest, truest um, interest above all things. And when you aim at the collective or your own collective, truest uh, interest, you'll see that it starts creating a rationale that is its own self today in the world. Sometimes it will be for a long distance something that a lot of people are saying in this in the in the better and the green and the love uh, scopes of of um, of arguments, but it will always be its own thing because nothing today, nothing today is anchored and premised on the whole collective, all of humanity as a whole first, always. Meaning, we're always talking about all of us, we're always talking about all of us, we're always talking about all of us. Nothing is, uh, nothing, nothing at all. Even um, right away, you, for example, I spoke of sexuality. This is easy because sexuality is something that we can all relate to today. It's being talked a lot about. Um, but no, I don't want to make this too long. But I found it um, very interesting that a lot of uh, love, rainbow, green, vegan, da 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 da, uh, unity, unity, peace, uh, unwittingly ignores completely uh, a streak, a stream of sexuality and homosexuality of people that, especially in the beginning, weren't happy. Uh, I feel it. I think it. Nobody knows what to tell me. They wanted to change it. They, wanted, they wished it wasn't like that, and yet we have uh, these good intentions, th this green, organic, rainbow world continues to lead that argument into a world where uh, the negation of homosexuality is quashed. Now, there isn't a negation because there isn't a separation. Homosexuality is a capacity of human sexuality. It is not its own thing, and it doesn't divide the genders in two. It doesn't divide people in two. It is something that, uh, to a great extent, can be learned. There are it's it's a, a, a together, a fusion of several things, uh, perhaps a biological chemical setup, which itself can have a couple of areas, the mother's womb or some genetic stuff that just creates a field of predisposition, but it doesn't determine anything. We're so obsessed with finding the culprit. And precisely in homosexuality, it, the, the worst thing is looking for the culprit. Homosexuality is a capacity of human sexuality, like it is capable, and as we can see, in animals also, it is, so it's very biological, it is very natural. However, while we contemplate that and know that, we also at the same time know that the greatest experience expression of evolution of our proliferation and our physical obviousness physically nature did not say well you know I'm not we can we can depart a little bit and you know you may say that maybe some men that have narrow shoulders and big hips is nature saying I'm not sure but really that doesn't cut it um, it's very clear it wants two genders and nature and all species plants and physical has made that very clear. It wants two genders. That's how it works. That's how it must work, not only on Earth. There must be something that transcends the Earth for all plant and living creatures to be defined for the purposes of its proliferation and, procre and proliferation um, and through procreation uh, on two genders. So this stands like the obelisk of the, of the 9th of July Avenue in Argentina. I could not um, call your attention in, in a city any more than that. Um, and yet, we are so bent on taking these idealisms and just flooding over that huge obelisk with as much of 
uh, high flood waters as we need to in order to not look at it, uh, deny it. So while we contemplate certain tendencies and things that nature has its reasons, nature does allow for uh, natural, for its own good reasons to occur. But we're human beings. We're human beings. We're not animals that just kind of surrender to our biological bodies and our intuition. We have cured diseases and sent ships to other planets, and we understand psychology and evolution and how we c and, and we can even contemplate ourselves with uh, this amazing difference that we are possessed with uh, that starts creating new relationships of comparison that animals can't do. Uh, and therefore, we have already tinkered with this awareness and said, okay, then we must establish a wedding, um, matrimony. The establishment of matrimony is kind of our, our fanatical attempt to say, well, we can see that we have too many problems with betrayal, with abandoning children, with uh, jealousy, and so it's just a cross-the-board, easy solution to impose matrimony. And as such, it has survived in, its, uh, in, in this gr gross uh, form uh, because so much of stuff that, ha that evolutionary is true is contained within it. We also are, uh, have evolved in our sciences enough to see it looks like we're really unfaithful. We hardly ever hung around our our kids and our and we moved on and so we're seeing other exceptions and we're seeing that the occurrence of f really falling in love for life and mating and really finding the right balance occurs yes it did occur after all but it doesn't occur as much as we thought and so we're discovering a whole area of new things that they're all included all things considered or all things included always and this should lead to, it should lead to, if we were more concerned with supporting our species instead of warring with each other or taking and, or being selfish, uh, this should lead to evolving institutions like matrimony to things that are, uh, uh, you know, more, that are truer to our variants and our variations and our exceptions and um, and, and, and allow for these things always for the purpose of because uh, a child always wants to have his two parents so we always have to have a way for which to allow for a man and a woman to be drawn to the child if the child calls them forth and they're always being a mom and a dad and that may mean stuff that we right now it's too much to imagine and to explain what what is interesting about humanity is that uh, we come up with things when, when we can pry ourselves away from the rigidity of institution. We invent things like polyamory. And uh, out there in a new field, we impose things again that seem to be truer to the great discovery of how unloyal we actually are often feel happier about being. Um, and we think that we have something truer than matrimony. And it turns out that we were completely leaving out um, another aspect about, for example, being there for the kid, for the, the father and the, the father-son relationship is so important and yet kind of delicate too because like two people that want to be their own bosses and yet one is led by the other, seeks the leadership of the other, wants to lead the other and, and yet they have to be equal and so there's this creates and ends up resulting in a sensitivity. But a more sophisticated understanding of this relationship should lead to a, a, betty, a, better, uh, <laughs> betty, a better polyamory, for example, and hopefully uh, a change, a transformation in matrimony and the availability, the, the um, uh, availability, I mean, the, the possibility of divorce without it being a, a trauma of separation but something that changes the configuration of the family as it is supported or configured by the state and its assistance to keeping the well-being of the development of the child always nurtured and thriving. Uh, 
should be our main goal. The state should honor matrimony uh, really for the purposes of the child. In other words, perhaps it could start with the birth of the child. It doesn't need to start before the birth of the child, perhaps. That could be one transformation. So as you can see, Gaia humanist civil thinking, in this case, presents new ideas of structure uh, that will go, will gravitate through, uh, I mean not gravitate, will flow through uh, things that already exist and will all of a sudden leave that and, s and start treading on places that have been uh, or, con or denied or thought of as negative or completely void and empty. It has to have its, its own course. So Gaia humanism is the fusion of this naturally conceived and defined humanism uh, not a spiritual one, but a more evolutionary, uh, socially civil structure, natural civil social structure of humanity. And um, in the natural world of Gaia and animals, all of them, both of them, brought together in the single expression of the earth, the ultimate, ultimate political philosophy, in other words. Um, which again, leaves it into an even bigger leaves it into an even bigger, more uh, empty, devoid of any company <laughs> space because I don't think there's any political uh, philosophy that is attempting to not just be true. Most of them are completely untrue to the natural biological form of, of the human being. We kind of tell it, you know, we put, throw it in jail. You know, the mind has, it doesn't ever want to leave the collective because it starts with a collective therefore reasoning takes you to understand that error comes and therefore because error came error is recognized by a space that is still in the mind that has to do with uh, redemption and recognition and it's all pulled forward by not wanting to separate from society granted we have created so much dysfunction that you could easily look at society and conclude it seems that human beings want to be isolated, separate, and pariahs, and what have you. There may be some of that, but it never, it never completes, it never makes a, f a, 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 it closes the circle in an integral element. It, it is temporary, it is circumstantial. What is reigning uh, overall is the fact that as a collective we want to stay together we don't want to become uh, maybe there is something very profound that always impulses us to create subspecies but we're so far from getting it right that we shouldn't even be concerned with that the first thing we should do is get this one right this species on the planet sharing the planet together equally as one get our uh, our gig <laughs> going right before we include in Gaia humanism any scientific tendency, there may be for us to create a subspecies. We can't even get this one right for our optimal um, environmental existence on our planet. You know, that would be a tangent that could be like an appendix just made into a little bunion and, you know, close the hatch door on that little tangent. But um, for now, for the next 10,000 years, <laughs> for the next 2,000 years, or so. Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to talk about. Um, oh yeah, that the f that so let alone would we have much to encounter in civil, political, administrative ideas when we fuse humanism, a perfect humanism, together with with uh, with Gaia. A natural, the existence of a natural world in one whole habitat, which is what we are. We are one habitat with our world. We will never live any place else. I think NASA, NASA knows this, but you know they got to keep entertaining kids and and fueling imagination. But I've already seen it. This is what's happening. What's so wonderful about this communication explosion era? is that people are becoming more, are exhibiting their uh, greater in collective intelligence through uh, accessible means. And so 
you hear somebody there's this this person that I've been watching a few, a, a few times already and he explains pretty well something that I had thought about already which is because we evolved with this composition of chemicals and gases and gravity we will always be uh, needing of support anywhere else even if we find a planet with the same gravity and similar gases and and we think we should go there all we got to do is wear a little mask in the morning even if that little mask that we only got to wear for two hours in order to be able to move to that planet uh, is the case it will still result in our children starting to be born with deficiencies and, and so it's almost like we are one with our home planet Gaia uh, we want to go to space and there's good reason for it um, as we continue to expand with more people being intelligent in other areas of, of Gaia humanism they will explain that well but it makes more sense that we uh, use our space technologies to serve to so we're kind of doing that with with uh, with uh, satellites but more so you know we could illuminate cities uh, for a couple hours at night with three differently positioned with satellites and therefore no longer need lampposts to give you an example of serving humanity with uh, rings uh, which also makes sense there's already a natural place it seems by looking at at the sun and planets there's some kind of gravitational tendency to collect rings around the equator of planets so that must be where our satellites must go instead of just being crazy jumbling all over the place uh, this is all this would all result from a, a Gaia humanist um, scientific thinking philosophy um, so yeah uh, so that's what Gaia humanism is um, and like I said it has two areas on the left I, I separate left and right because left is more what it learns from the right but it's uh, actually wanting to do its own thing it wants to evolve it's the evolving to another to uh, sort of a replacement I don't know but anyways the practical experience is the right the 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 more intuitive abstract spiritual is the left that's how I kind of have, have created a place for right and left and so that's why I put on the right would be the 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 place for uh, humanist political civil thinking philosophy uh, for the constructions of uh, transformation the diagnosis <laughs> diagnosis the in, in other words uh, unraveling un revealing and unraveling the problem we don't want to get stuck in an intelligence that is about understanding what is wrong with something because then it starts bogging you down people first you get people who say you're just negative you, you know, you're only looking for you get rid of those and then you get the people who come in after that and say okay good I see you understand what the problem is and they wait because what we want is to thrive and we want a solution that will go in that place so we don't want to stay too we have to be very smart and very precise in understanding what the problem was why we aired why we believe that how it's not working how it may hurt us even more in the long run but you need to leave the part from there and start producing a proposal start saying okay this is what would work better and this other solution or proposal is so that we can make a transition with how things are set up which would be uh, aiming towards this other proposal and start talking about how to get out of the situation and what would ultimately be a more stable replacement of the way things are now so all our the majority of our energy and uh, thinking energy needs to go through making the new but it is not negative uh, it is not pessimistic to be very good at understanding why things went wrong and what is wrong with it or revision uh, making a revision saying how something really was what we quashed and silenced and replaced with what is hurting us and understanding everything that went wrong and what is untrue about the past but always leaving that um, 
to put our greater efforts and most of uh, uh, our developmental reasoning and un intelligent understanding of things towards the production of the new and the future. Um, and then on the left would be the Gaia Humanist uh, Spiritual House, which could have uh, a, a more an un what would seem as unplausible or unrealizable but beautiful, artistic, pure, uh, more to do with art and song and chant and maybe create a whole scheme of, if Gaia Hunas believe we were created, there is actually uh, a beings or a God creator, God creators that uh, are responsible for, uh, for us being here. Our, it was, uh, they wanted to s this to be and so we could have a religious house that that says thank you and asks the world instead of asking them because they kind of said oh, we want to see you uh, but you know the truth is that our imbalance leaves us in a constant inadequate in a constant un state of unbalance of strife of, of not of carrying something that is a greater capacity then we can use. In other words, we have a larger, we're endowed with something late, larger than our capacity can handle, kind of thing. So this constant unbalance that I explained in the beginning must produce a sense of not answering. There's a space before which we simply know that if we push it there, we will err. There's nothing beyond that point. So what do we do? We pray. We ask uh, uh, wisdom from the planet, from the earth, from others, from our brothers and sisters. Uh, we hope, you know, so there would be a place for a spiritual religious house to grow out of this philosophy. Um, and it would not pretend to, you know, wear itself out exerting so much fight and argument against what needs to change in the world. And that would be more the interest perhaps of people that can or are more in the right place to do things. Um, and this way, the, I, the concept or the idea of, of Gaia hum humanism is not intrusive, is not subversive. Uh, it simply adapts to the way the world is already set up with political philosophy, political parties, logical thinking, and sciences, and, and um, spiritual houses of thought and religions and religious literature or political literature it's already there they're all you know arguing with them. we're just saying or I'm just saying uh, okay this is where we can put something as the world has always known uh, being but based on these principles these values uh, these philosophies uh, for human civilization. That's it. That's what Gaia humanism is.